colic is excessive crying in babies less than three months old and usually the crying is of unknown cause. Colic is a diagnosis that can be only made after exclusion of any medical causes, usually by going to a doctor to have the baby examined. Colic is very common, it affects one in five babies less than three months old. The crying babies may look like they're in pain in that they draw up their legs, they arch their back and they may pass wind but often it's because they're swelling or they're air while crying. Symptoms that Harry had when he was unsettled were that he'd cry a lot, um, be very, very difficult to get him to stop crying and you'd think, I've changed his nappy, I've fed him, I've burped him, what's going on? Uh, and that's pretty stressful. No one really understands why babies get colic despite many years of research. The most important and serious effects of colic are maternal depression and shaken baby syndrome or child abuse. Mothers of Babies with colic are often very stressed and sleep deprived, especially when the crying doesn't seem to be able to stop. It's very, very stressful, yeah. There was a stage when he was about five weeks that either my husband or myself had to cuddle him between about 5pm and midnight. So it meant that we didn't get much sleep at all and that just made everything worse, being sleep deprived and stressful. Uh, you sort of think, being a first baby, am I doing something wrong? Am I a bad parent? Why can't I get my baby to settle? And there were times where he and I would both end up in tears, so that was pretty hard. But fortunately we got through that and things are a bit better now. Currently, there are no effective treatment options for colic. Because nothing really works for colic, parents are often given conflicting and confusing advice, which doesn't help the situation. This study is the first, largest and most rigorous randomised trial of probiotics for colic, including breastfed and formula-fed infants. We recruited 167 families and randomly allocated 85 infants to receive the probiotic and 82 infants to receive the placebo, which is no probiotic, as five drops a day for one month. The babies were recruited over a one year period in 2011 and 2012 in Melbourne, Australia, through the emergency department at the Royal Children's Hospital and through maternal child health nurses and paediatricians. All of these babies had a diagnosis of colic in that they were crying more than three hours of the day for three days of the week. And most of them were crying around 330 minutes a day, which is five and a half hours. The study showed that unfortunately, the probiotic Lactobacillus rotori was not effective in reducing crying or fussing in infants with colic, whether they were breast or formula fed. We also found that the probiotic did not affect infant sleep, maternal mental health or family functioning. There were no differences in crying or fussing time between the probiotic or placebo groups and this was the case when we looked at the breastfed infants and the formula fed infants separately. In fact, the formula fed babies who were assigned the probiotic seemed to fuss more than the ones who were assigned the placebo at all time points during the study period. At this stage, we cannot routinely recommend probiotics for the management of infants with colic. It is not effective in formula-fed babies with colic and its use in breastfed babies with colic is still uncertain.